Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're heading out from Mars and Cove and going out to the Poor Nights to do some free diving and just check it out. First stop is I think it's called the Sugarloaf, the very first pinnacle as you're heading out there. I've dived the Poor Nights a few times before but haven't dived it for a couple of years. So we thought we'd try something different. As you can see, the really, really deep water so close to the rocks here, so it's not exactly the perfect place to anchor. We're maybe only 20 metres from the rocks there and it's already 65 metres. The guys are really excited. This is the first time Jacko's been out here. He's super excited. He's not too worried and he's back over the side. Once everyone's started getting going, I'm getting ready to jump in. The surface was alive with massive, massive coho. These were really, really big lunkers. Big coho were beautiful when they're all lit up like this. There didn't seem to be anything chasing them just at the moment, and there wasn't a huge amount of pelagic action, but it was certainly nice to swim around them. Often when I go to the poor nights, I do like to see if I can find other different interesting fish that I wouldn't normally see. And the Poor Nights is a great place for that. Had enough of seeing what was on the surface and I thought we'll have a look and see what's down these steep walls. No doubt there's going to be the odd step on the way down, but it's going to go really, really deep, really quickly. I get down deep enough to maybe anywhere between sort of 35 and 40 meters here, there was all this jumble of cool rocks. And right on the edge there, I haven't spotted it yet, is a long fin boarfish. Not commonly seen, but I have seen a few at the poor night, so it's obviously one of the more likely places to find them. This poor little guy's obviously seen quite a few scuba divers and didn't really like me getting too close. It's a nice looking country this as it obviously drops off into extremely deep water and there's nice nooks and crannies that small reef fish can hide in. You'll see a golden snapper pops out here as well. And there's that long fin bullfish hiding under the ledge there. It's actually quite awkward trying to dive with a camera, especially when you don't have your spear gun helping you aim the direction that you're swimming and you're a lot more streamlined with it than you are with the camera. Got to be a little bit cautious doing deeper stuff with the camera that you don't get too caught up in what you're doing. That jumble wheel of rocks was quite cool, so I thought I'd make another dive and see what else I can find down there. You go through layers of fish, there'd be the cohera on the surface and then you go through demoiselles, pink mau mau, of course there's snapper everywhere being the poor knights. And again look at all these cool boulders down here. And you're starting to get interesting sort of sponges and different corals down this deep as well. This is prime habitat for golden snapper. So it's not a surprise when I see more of them. And I didn't actually realise there's a scorpion fish right there too. And that's a striped boarfish. Different to the long fin boarfish. Unfortunately, you didn't want to hang around, but very much a tropical species I've seen when I've been spearing and Tonga and the places like that. They've got yellow and black bands and a similar sort of shape to the long fin boarfish, but a more stubby nose. It's pretty cool because I've never seen one in New Zealand before. And on the way to the surface, of course, there's a few bronze whalers swimming around. Once again, cautious not to spend too much time down there. It's a long slog back to the surface. 
We'd had enough of that spot and we moved. And then we moved to the next, next lot of rocks, to where the tie-dye arch is, I think it's called. And the water was a lot clearer here. It was beautifully blue. Lots of charter operators, like the one that was parked there, will take you here. There's a bit of current pouring through the cave, so it made for interesting swim through. The bottom here is maybe, I think, 16 metres or 15 metres, something like that. And you've just got to duck dive down to about 5 metres to get underneath it. Sophie's turn now. She's gone right down towards the bottom to swim through and you can see her pedaling into the current. It's a funny feeling because you want to be careful you don't hit your head on the rocks. Although it doesn't look very far, it kind of becomes a little bit further than you think when you're swimming on an angle. else that was quite cool in the tie day arch here there was a boulder here and it was obviously a cleaning station there was a group of mado there and the kingfish kept swimming underneath that rock there getting cleaned That's a mado there. If you see those when you're out spearing or when you're free diving, often it's going to be a cleaning station where fish will come past and get cleaned. Perfect timing when I spun around and these two big kingfish were cruising through the tunnel. They're certainly not bothered by me at all. You can see the water clarity here was absolutely stunning. Looks like an aquarium when you dive down to the bottom there with all the different shades of colour and light coming through the different entrances. There weren't a huge amount of fish in here as there normally is. But probably with the scuba divers being in there earlier they might have spooked a few fish out. Once we'd had a good look at the arch, me and Sophie started heading out wider to see what else we might see as the water was so lovely and clear. We headed up current to the front of the rocks. And you see here there was lots of cotter around. There was even a seal dancing around. Gave me a little bit of fright as it obviously didn't want me to hang around it. Although the seal kept following us for a while, just watching what we were doing. Another interesting tropical species, you actually see these quite a, quite a bit at lots of different places, are the blue knife fish. There's quite a decent school of them here. We headed right out to the point where it looked like it was going to catch the most current and get deep. And all these masses of trevally were all parked up. There was plenty of snapper as per usual. Butterfish. 
magnificent spot, so many fish. All out in the background there, which is, can be hard to see in the camera, is just masses of trevally rolling around. Just resting up by the looks of it. We followed the fish out to sea and then stumbled across a massive blue mammal as well. It was kawai amongst them, of course, trevally, big kohuru, kingfish. We just kept heading out further and further out to sea as I figured there must be rocks or some sort of reef below us with all these demoiselles. But when the boat actually turned up, it was 70 metres deep. A school of big kingfish came cruising in, just as we were about to hop out as well. All the school fish were here, just milling out, right out deep out off the island. Next spot was the Northern Arch, which again is really, really popular. Lots of people dive it. But once again, we figured it was actually gonna be quite difficult to anchor the boat here, as it gets so deep just off the rocks. There's a charter boat parked there, so we tried on the other side there, but it was too deep, being 56 meters so close to the rocks, we parked on the other side once the charter boat left. There was lots of big rays swimming through the archway here, which were really nice to see. Loads of snapper, everything was very placid. And again, the visibility was amazing. It was obvious here the fish were really, really used to people as the snapper wouldn't swim away when you get close to them. Mobs of stingrays were just swimming backwards and forwards through the archway here. Again, the structure at the Poor Nights is so beautiful and not that similar to any other places we dive. careful when coming up not to swim into the stingrays as a few of us nearly did. Here's a funny snapper with a deformity almost like it's been speared before or caught in a net. The snapper got really friendly here as they're obviously used to people. We had our float, our float boat there with the flag on it so people knew we were divers in the water and the snapper took real interest in the float line chewing on it. Another tropical visitor, which again you see in quite a few places, is a Lord Howe coral fish. It was time to go because we wanted to head back to the coast and try and get some crayfish on the way home as obviously it's a no-take zone in the poor nights. It was great back on the coast just before we headed back into the harbour. The crayfish were plentiful and upright, nice and shallow. It didn't take long to grab a couple before we headed back in.
I managed to eventually wrestle this one up and head back to the surface, but actually dropped it on the way back. And here it is running along the bottom, so I'm quickly racing back down to try and grab it. This spot's even shallower, maybe in only about two meters of water. That tops off a great day. Dan's got a couple of crays as well. So we're stoked, we had a great day out at the Poor Nights and grabbed a couple of crays on the way back in for a feed.